Today we're going to talk about some of the advanced features of WordPerfect and see how these features can help you save time and to do more creative kinds of work with your computer. I'm going to show you how to use macros, styles, columns, and graphics. Near the end of the tape, we will use many of these features to design and publish a newsletter. We're using WordPerfect with a PCXT compatible computer with a hard drive, two floppy disk drives, and an MS-DOS operating system. If you have a different system, you may need to check your owner's manual to adjust for minor differences. This videotape will introduce you to several different topics. We suggest that you view the entire tape first, then review specific demonstrations as you need them. Now let's get started. WordPerfect has developed a convenient way to avoid repetitive tasks when designing documents. Macros remember the step-by-step -step tasks and repeat them for you whenever necessary. For example, we used a macro to write this Silicon Mountain memo sheet. We develop the design and whenever we want to write a memo, we can pull the basic pattern up and fill in the blanks to suit our needs. With WordPerfect, we can create two kinds of macros, temporary and permanent. You can have only one temporary macro at a time. When you make a new one, the old one is replaced. Temporary macros are useful when you have to repeat a long or difficult section in a document. Suppose that you had the names Johann Sebastian Bach, Franz Peter Schubert, and Ludwig von Beethoven repeated several times in a letter. By making a macro, you could save many keystrokes and a considerable amount of time. First, we'll type Control F10 Macro Define and answer the prompt by pressing Enter. Notice that the screen is showing a flashing macro definition. We'll answer that prompt by typing in the names that we want to record. Then we'll press Control F10 again to stop recording. To show you how the macro works, let's type the following. The three composers who inspired him were. Now we'll press the spacebar once to allow a space between the copy and the macro. Type Alt F10 or macro and answer the prompt by pressing Enter. Notice that the macro appears at the cursor point and we can continue typing. If you see an error in a macro or want to stop the macro process, you can do so by typing F1. Permanent macros are much like temporary ones, except that they have file names. There are two kinds of file names for permanent macros, alt letter macros and descriptive macros. Alt letter names consist of the alt key plus a letter, such as D or S. Descriptive macros have names that tell what they do, such as address or settings. The file name of all permanent macros end with the extension .wpm. There is much more information available about working with macros. They can be used in a wide variety of ways. Consult your owner's manual. Now, let's review macros. Macros remember step-by-step -step tasks and repeat them for you when necessary. You can have only one temporary macro at a time. Temporary macros are useful for creating a long document that has repetitive steps. We can access the macro feature by pressing Control F10. To run a macro, we press Alt F10. Permanent alt letter macros are useful for forms or headings. Descriptive macros are useful for lengthy processes. Styles are much like macros, but have the advantage of being more easily changed. There are two types of styles, open and paired. Open styles are used for formatting an entire document. Paired styles deal with particular parts of a document. We will use the open style to format our report and paired styling to work with headings. First, let's look at the style selections. Type Alt F8. Press number three for create. Notice that the edit menu appears and that number two is already set for paired styles and number five is set for hard return. Type number one for name. At the prompt, type newsletter and press enter. 
change selection number two from paired to open by typing two, then selecting the number two again. Select number three, then type what you want the style feature to do. For the newsletter, we will enter format newsletter, and press enter. We will now select number four, then enter the formatting codes and text for the report. We will type Shift F6, F8, type Silicon's Annual Report, F8, enter, enter, and type number one, Income, enter twice. Number two, expenses. Enter twice. Number three, earnings. Then press exit or F7 three times. We will use a paired style to set up codes for the headings in our report. Type Alt F8. And when the menu appears, select number three. Now we have the styles edit menu. Type number one to select name. We will name our style headings. Type headings and press enter. Notice that the type of style listed in number two is paired, which does not need to be changed. Type number three for description and type bold and uppercase. and press Enter. Press F7 once. Notice that both styles are now listed on the menu. Press F7 again to return to the document screen. Now, let's review styles. Open styles are used to format an entire document. Paired styles are used for sections of a document. We can access the Styles feature whenever we want by pressing Alt F8. We will do that later when we produce our newsletter. Styles are much easier to change than macros. WordPerfect combines its capability for text columns with that for math columns. In this program, we will deal with text columns. We can access the Columns feature by pressing Alt F7. The first two options available are for mathematics. Selections 3 and 4 are concerned with text columns. Press number 4 for column definition. The default setting has selected newspaper columns. Our other choices are parallel columns or parallel columns with block protect. With newspaper columns, you can bring in files of copy within the column or type within the column, but you cannot move back and forth from one column to the next while typing. Parallel columns are used for itineraries for scripting and other kinds of documents that require movement from column to column. Parallel columns with block protect keep blocks of information together and prevent its being broken up between pages. Notice that the default setting for columns lists two columns each three inches wide with a space of one half inch between the columns. Suppose we wanted to change the number of columns from two to three. We would select the number two, number of columns, and type in three then press Enter. The default setting automatically sets distance between columns. If you wish, you can change the settings by typing 4 and making changes in the settings. When we have made our selections, we'll press F7 and return to the document screen. The column options still appear at the bottom of the document screen. We can press number 3 to turn the column feature on. To show you how the parallel column feature works, we will type a sentence. WordPerfect offers a possibility for 24 columns on a page.
Notice how it forms a column without adding an enter. At the end of the statement, we will press Control Enter. Notice how the cursor jumps over to the next column. Control Enter is used for the first jump only. To jump back to the first column, press Control Home, left arrow. After that, to jump to the right, press Control Home, right arrow. It's time to review what we've learned about columns in WordPerfect. We can access the Columns feature by pressing Alt F7. The first two options are for Mathematics, and options 3 and 4 are for Text. There are three types of columns, Newspaper, Parallel, and Parallel with Block for Text. With Newspaper columns, you cannot move back and forth between columns. Parallel columns are for documents that require movement between columns. Block Protect keeps pieces of information together. <music> graphics can be fun. The Graphics feature may be used to create a figure, a table, a box, or a line. The Graphics feature is also used with other software programs to create charts, structures, and animation. In this segment of the videotape, we will use graphics to create a figure. Later, when we design the newsletter, we will use the graphics feature to create lines and a box. Several graphics files are included on the fonts and graphics disk of WordPerfect. To create a figure, we will press Alt F9, Graphics, and select number one, Figure. At the prompt, we then select number one, Create. When the definition menu appears, we will select number one, File Name, then type in a file name from the graphics file. We will use the file name airplane.wpg. And press Enter. WordPerfect has a selection of graphic images available on the fonts and graphics disk, but additional graphics are available from other software sources. Consult your owner's manual. To see the figure and adjust its size and angle of rotation, select number 8, Edit. We can move the figure by selecting number 1 and changing the horizontal and vertical settings. We can also move it by using the cursor arrows. We can adjust the size of the figure by selecting number 2 and changing the X and Y coordinates. We can also use the Page Up button to make the figure larger and Page Down to make it smaller. To rotate the figure, select number 3 and enter the number of degrees of rotation and press Enter. Then exit to the document screen by pressing F7 twice. We can see how the figure will look on our page. We just press Shift F7 and number six, view. After viewing, press F7. WordPerfect allows us to adjust size, shape, and angle of rotation of line drawings. WordPerfect software can be used for desktop publishing. Today we will design and publish a newsletter using WordPerfect. You will need a printer that will print graphics and a graphics card in your computer. For high quality work, we recommend a laser printer that is compatible with your computer system. The laser printer prints near typeset quality text and graphics. We'll start by designing the page. 
The appearance of the page depends upon the number and size of columns, the styles and sizes of fonts, and the number and placement of graphics. A balanced design is pleasing to look at and gives the impression of stability. An unbalanced design draws attention and may stimulate interest. Choose the design you want before you begin your newsletter. We'll use this design as an example. Notice that it has a masthead, two columns, and one graphics box. Let's begin with style. Press Alt F8 and choose 3, Create. Select number 1, Name. Type Silica News at the prompt. and press enter. The style name is limited to 12 letters. Change selection number 2 from paired to open by pressing 2, then selecting number 2. Select number 3, description, and type format newsletter. And press enter. Next, type number 4 to prepare to enter the formatting codes. First, we will want to center the masthead. Type Shift F6. We also want the font to be large. Type Control F8 for font selection. And choose number 1, Size. From the listing of sizes, select number 5, large, and type 5. To bold the font, press F6. After we type Silicon Mountain News, we will type Control F8, 1, and 5. Now we will shut off the bold by pressing F6 and press Enter. Although we could type Volume 1 on the left and space over about 3 inches to type the date, including this information in the style is often unsatisfactory. When we are finished entering the codes, we press F7 three times to return to the normal screen. When we want to use this style, we can press Alt F8 and select it from the list. We just highlight the style and select number one, which is on. Now we'll need to use our graphics feature. The style turns on your screen when you press enter. If you press enter again, the style is turned off. In order to put a horizontal line between the masthead and the news columns, we need to access the graphics section of WordPerfect. We will press Alt F9 and choose number 5, line. Choose number 1, horizontal, and type F7 to exit the screen. Notice that on our sample newsletter, we have two columns of text, bold headlines, and one graphic box. We have already set the masthead and its dividing line. Now we need to set the columns. We'll press Alt F7 for columns and choose number four, definitions. The default settings have already selected newspaper and two columns. We can exit this menu. When we want to access columns, the settings will already be available. The distance between columns automatically adjusts itself depending upon how many columns you specify. Now we're ready to create the box that will contain the graphic or photo for our newsletter. Turn on WordPerfect graphics by typing Alt F9. Select number 3, Text. At the next group of choices, select number 1, Create. The caption for this box will be centered and bolded. Type number 2 for caption. Then press Shift F6 to center and F6 to bold. Type Today's Weather. Then press F6 again to turn off the bold. Then press F7 to exit. 
The type of box listed here may be character, paragraph, or page. Each has special properties of alignment. For the purpose of this sample, we will choose a page box. We will press number three, and then select number two for page. We want to place the box at the bottom of the page along the bottom margin and centered between the left and right margins. We will type four to change the vertical position then select number four, bottom. Next, we will select the horizontal position, number five. Choose number one, margins. And at the next selection, number three, center. To change the size, we will press number six. Select both width and height, number three. Change the margins to five and a half inches and two and a half inches. And you must press enter after each change. We will also want to select the wraparound text feature by selecting number seven and answer yes when the prompt appears. Then press F7 to exit. As is, the box can be used by a printer as a space in which to place a photo. For our purposes, we will place the graphic that is on the sample. We need to access the graphic feature again. We will type Alt F9. Now we must select the type of box to be edited. In our case, it is a text box. We'll type number three for text box, then type two for edit. Let's select one for box number one, and then press enter. Now you will enter the file name of a graphics image into the definition. Select file name by pressing a number one. At the prompt, we'll enter the file name quill.wpg. If your disk has graphics images in a subdirectory, you may need to type c colon backslash wp backslash graphics backslash quill dot wpg. Then press F7 to exit. Our newsletter is ready for copy. Let's look at the layout by typing shift F7 and selecting number six, view. Exit by pressing F7. Now we're ready to place text in the columns. To do that, we must press Shift F10 and type in the name of a file that we've saved to place copy into the newsletter. To place your own articles, etc., first type them with no attributes or formatting codes, then place them in a file. We'll be using the style features that we've already created to format headings for the copy we import. Place the cursor at the beginning of the Better Videos Now heading. Press Alt F4 block and move the cursor to the end of the heading to highlight the title. We'll type Alt F8 style and select number one on. The style codes will change our heading. Then press Shift F7 and 6 to view the heading changes. You can follow these same steps for the headings of other articles. Sometimes a vertical line is used to separate columns in a newsletter. We want a vertical line to run the entire length of the column. So we'll begin with the cursor just past the column on code. First, press Alt F3 to reveal the codes. And press the right arrow until the cursor has passed the column on code. 
Then we'll press Alt F3 again to return to the normal screen. We'll access the graphic function by pressing Alt F9. Then select number 5, line, and press number 2 for vertical line. The horizontal position is set for the left margin, but we need to place it between the columns. Press 1 to change the horizontal position. Then press 3 to place the line between columns. If the number 1 does not appear after the prompt, press 1 to indicate that the line should go to the right of column 1. Press Enter. WordPerfect automatically measures from the position of the cursor to the bottom of the column. Exit by pressing F7, and take a look at the copy by pressing Shift F7, or Print, and selecting number 6 to view. Exit view by pressing F7. When you are ready to print the newsletter, press Shift F7, and select number one, full document. Our newsletter is finished. Let's review a few of the features we covered in developing it. First, we decided upon a page design, taking into consideration the impression we wanted to make with the publication. Next, we used a style feature to design the masthead. We also used graphics to create a horizontal line between the masthead and the copy and to create a vertical line between columns. We designed a box, which can be used for a graphic figure. We imported text and used the style feature to record codes for headings. We hope that you have enjoyed learning about some of WordPerfect's advanced features.